Hello and welcome, my name is Aaron Mastani, co-founder of Navarra Media. We're coming to you from London, England. We're talking, I believe, to the Real News Network, most of which their followers in the United States, is that right? Indeed. I'm joined by Cam and Thomas from Real Media. Yeah. We are talking about what else, of course, tonight's incredible, sensational and broadly unexpected general election results here in Britain. Thomas, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. For people who are interested, but not necessarily all that up to date with what's going on, stateside, a brief overview of what's happened this evening. So, uh, Labour have confounded all expectations. We were th beginning the night thinking they would lose quite a lot of seats, that uh, the Conservatives would uh, increase their majority, the incumbent Prime Minister would be... Um, taking us into a hard Brexit with an increased majority and be bringing in a lot of draconian measures. What we have said, instead seen is the insurgent campaign of a rejuvenated Labour Party with lots of young people bringing out 12 million people to vote, the largest vote since 1997, in possibly the biggest electoral shock, not only since the Second World War, since 1945, but possibly ever in electoral history uh, in Britain, and certainly as far as we can uh, decipher. This has been astounding. Now, we are here at six in the morning trying to make sure that we sound coherent and cogent, but I think for everyone at home, what you need to know in the States is that a progressive leader, an insurgent, someone who's on the fringes of the party, someone not dissimilar to Bernie Sanders, has not only taken control of the, the Labour Party, but within two years, taken it to an electoral result that could have never been expected. And this has been despite uh, coup attempt, a Brexit referendum, a hostile press that makes the American press look unbiased, <laughs> right? And um, it, unbelievable slurs against his name <laughs> consistently. But he's mobilised an army of 600,000 people who've gone out door knocking in all the key places and have turned something round. And that, whilst it hasn't delivered a victory in terms of seats, it has delivered one of the most astounding results in uh, living history. If it's not a knockout blow, they've put the Tories on their ass. Absolutely. Now we're talking about whether uh, Theresa May is going to stay Prime Minister. Uh, you know, uh, the Home Secretary who was looking like that she would be the next Prime Minister had to have seven recounts. She almost lost a seat. This is a member of the Cabinet, right? Another Cabinet member lost their seat. You know, uh, Labour decapitating people left, right and centre. If it wasn't for the, Socialist, uh, the Scottish National Party um, collapsing and losing a lot of seats to the Conservatives, we might have had... And Labour. And Labour. And Scotland and Labour in Scotland, we might have had a completely different result. But it has absolutely put the Conservatives on the, uh, their bottoms and it has given um, absolute credence to the fact that the British public are behind a progressive agenda. Great. Cam? Um, did we expect this? We didn't, did we? <laughs> My God. But try and convey to the audience okay. just how unexpected it is because there aren't any precedents in UK history yep. that I know of. No. Um, I think we can safely say now there has been a massive suppression by the state, by the media and by the governing party of a movement that has happened and is happening. Uh, and that comes from the point at which Jeremy Corbyn was first elected leader, then had to defend that leadership. Then we became the largest left party in Europe. Um, and we were still told, oh, it's just your members, though. It's not the rest of the UK. At all points, um, yeah, and as you say, we had the press against us as well. Um, to now come through with this, it's clear that everything was working against this prog these progressive ideas to exist. Uh, in 2015, when Ed Miliband um, lost, they were saying that he wasn't right-wing enough and that the left was you know, almost finished and that Theresa May had called this election to, uh, to end the left and Labour and Jeremy Corbyn. Um, and it couldn't have turned out worse for her because now she's not going to be able to maintain her position. I mean, it really couldn't have turned out much worse for her. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Because for people watching, okay, they would say, well, Labour haven't got the most seats, they're not the largest party, yeah. they're not going to form a government. How's that, this historic thing? But what you have to understand is that just six weeks ago, Labour were polling in the mid-20s. Yeah. And in local elections, just a month ago, they got 27, I believe, 28. And they just got over 40. And they haven't got over 40 for 16 years in a general election. So, no, more, 1997. 20, 20 years. So, it's a startling turnaround. I mean, I really can't think of any, you know, people talk about the Canadian Liberals under Trudeau coming from nowhere to win it. This is bigger. 
this is this is a lot bigger and I think actually again if there's any lessons for our American audience it's this is that you'll probably see in the Democratic Party establishment Democrats corporate Democrats trying to fight against and undercut Bernie Sanders and the movement that's putting him there we saw that non-stop mm. from before he was even elected during the leadership campaign the first leadership campaign for Jeremy Corbyn Tony Blair the former leader of the Labour Party who had been outstandingly popular for a particular period of time until after Iraq and other um, horrendous things that he did uh, come out three times, get front pages in the leading liberal paper of the UK, The Guardian, and attack Jeremy Corbyn. It had been non-stop, not only from him, but members of his own party ever since that point. Uh, every attempt was made to discredit him and undermine him by his own party. And in fact, one can only ask the question, if they hadn't been doing that, if they had thought about their own jobs purely selfishly, you know, even if they didn't have the morals to support a proper progressive agenda, if they just thought about their own jobs, got behind him, would we have seen the most historic history in British history, uh, in British political history? I think that's quite likely. So the lesson to be learned is, um, remember, the democratic establishment don't know what they're doing. You know that from the losses that they've had. We know it from the uh, Labour's establishment uh, that they didn't know what they were doing and it was a good job they were replaced because quite frankly Labour could have been a non-entity by this point. Jeremy Corbyn saved the Labour Party but also pushed forward with an army of volunteers and members a progressive agenda that will shape British politics for generations. Again it's an American audience and we have to make it personal to them. Do the events of tonight perhaps compound the idea that Bernie would have won? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that. I, I I think, you know, clearly the polling said that Bernie would have won in a landslide, he had a 12% lead uh, on the average of polls, even if he got viciously attacked over the course of the campaign, there's no way to have eroded that. He, and because of the presidential system as well, it would be more likely that Bernie would have done well. I think he'd absolutely have uh, won. He certainly... Him or someone like him has a great opportunity in 2020 to change the face of American politics. I think you've got to learn that from the British experience here. Uh, the most important thing is learning, I think what we learned this time is, we didn't learn it during the referendum, but what was learned by the membership is go out, knock on doors, go to the swing states, go to the marginal constituencies, go to the places you don't usually go to, talk to the people you don't usually talk to. Do that en masse, do it in an organised way and continue doing it until you win people round and you will get astounding results. We've won places that were conservative for 150 years. Mm. 150 I mean, years. The Labour, Party, the Labour Party hasn't existed that long. No. Yeah. 150 years, it's for, again for viewers, 1867 was, it was the first time the franchise was extended to people who weren't incredibly affluent. But yeah. there was no such thing as the Labour Party when Canterbury didn't vote Tory, voted for the Liberals. Yeah. Uh, a whole different ball game in 1867. So, Cam, what can viewers take from tonight's events in terms of you know domestic political activism and how they can shape the future of the US? Uh, well, like Tom's just said, it is about getting out there and speaking to people face to face. It, we've had uh, you know, a huge take up of volunteers on the streets in the last few days and those are the people that have really brought home this kind of result. Also, Corbyn's strategy, the way that he played out his campaign over those six weeks and even just slightly before that, uh, was going after the youth vote and representing them and that has really, really uh, turned up some, some wonderful things for him. He's now energised a whole group of young people who have been screwed over in the last few years uh, by, by political figures who, who, who use their votes and then kind of trash them. And I'm thinking of the Liberal Democrats here. Um, so the thing to learn is that you, 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 you can enthuse this movement. There are a bunch of young people who are not being served um, and it's, it can happen quite quickly. I mean, I don't think anyone sitting here... I Six weeks. Yeah. Two, two, two years ago, the idea that the Labour Party could be this kind of vehicle, you know, wouldn't have crossed my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And this really happened within six weeks, as was said, you know, six weeks, um, 20, low 20s in the polls, a demoralised movement. Not low 20s, mid 20s. Mid 20s. Be fair. 24% at one point, I think. But yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, s struggling, you know, with the idea of the leadership and so forth. And actually, once galvanised and given an objective, people turned out and given the manifesto that was the other thing the offer what uh, Americans call the platform mm. um, that manifesto 
leaked early, set the agenda, energised people and said, you know what, actually, for the first time I can ever remember, we could actually hope for something mm -hmm. that actually going to make our lives better, all of our lives better, young, old, middle class, mm -hmm. working class, uh, working poor, you know, disabled, homeless, you know, everyone was going to do better. And the slogan, for the many, not the few, that, that uh, you know, encapsulated a campaign which I think will uh, go down in history. So I think, you know, I think that's a good point to leave it on, but I do think, you know, uh, yes, check out what comes out in the next few days, but certainly this has been an historic time. And if those watching want to keep up with events in the UK over the coming days and weeks, who do they need to follow? They need to follow Real Media, our friends, uh, good friends and allies at Navarra Media, and of course, Real News Network. Check them out. They do astounding coverage of all kinds of issues. On that note, Thomas, Cam, you've been great all night. We've been here since 9pm, it's now gone 6am, you know what, it was absolutely worth it, one of the best nights of my life, we'll see you soon and if we've got more good news coming your way from the UK, you know what, we'll bring it to you, see you later.